Happy 4th of July, sports fans. Welcome to a special 4th of July doubleheader of League One. It's Season 15, Week 8. We've got Louisville at number 2, Syracuse, followed by number 25, SMU, at Navy. We'll take a quick look through the... Uh, roster here for the uh, for 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 the Louisville, and that's going to be by the head coach of the Syracuse Orange. He's going to give you that synopsis. Here he is. Hello, sports fans. Coach Spector here, the head coach of the Syracuse Orange. Thank you, Coach Ninja, for that handoff. The Louisville Cardinals, led by Jawan Pass, once again. He's a 93. With some speed and agility, uh, although he only takes off when need be. He's got about 30 yards rushing. But he's got a 19-7 to touchdown to interception ratio and a 283 yards per game average. This is a pass-heavy team. Colin Wilson is out with an injury. Day Williams will be playing. Uh, he's got 400 yards rushing already, so uh, my suspicion is that Wilson's been out for some time. But Williams, a more than adequate backup, almost a twin of Wilson. Fontenot, uh, not particularly utilized at the fullback position. The wide receivers loaded with speed, particularly Des Fitzpatrick. 99 speed, going to be an issue uh, if he can get behind the defense. Reed and Marshall and Wakefield round out a more than adequate passing core that is at least utilized three deep. Kamari Averitt with 55 yards a game, certainly a part of the passing game at the tight end position. The offensive line, 83, 87, 85, 82, and 88 across the board. Defensive ends, Tabarius Peterson, an 83, and Cronin, an 84. Dorsey and Tillman, who will be playing, round out the front four. Lamarquez Thomas, an 84 left outside linebacker with good speed. And Dorian Etheridge, um, an 87 middle linebacker with good speed. Avery, an excellent speed impact player right outside linebacker. Going to cause all sorts of difficulty on the rollouts to the left. Yeast is the top corner. Johnson and Strange may be players that we attack in the secondary. P.J. Blue, a senior free safety, and Treshawn Smith and Lynn Strange at strong safety. They could potentially both be on the field in a 3-3-5 or a 4-2-5. A freshman kicker is about the only not good player on the roster. But this is a passing team that's going to put up a lot of points. Last year, they played us to within 40, 41 to 38. So we expect another good ball game. We're thankful to have them at home. And we will do our best to outscore this high-powered offense. Without further ado, we're going to pass it back over to Coach Ninja, the voice of Syracuse football, and get this exciting doubleheader underway. Don't forget to stay tuned for Game 2, number 25, SMU, at Navy. All right. Thank you, Coach. As we see, 99 overall against 93, but that's a 97 offense for the Cardinals. in this ACC conference game.
Louisville, number 22 overall in points per game and number 15 in yards per game with the sixth passing offense facing off against the number one points per game and number two yards per game offense of the Syracuse Orange who are number five in the country on the ground, number 33 through the air. With more yards per game on the ground for the Orange this season than through the air. Additionally, both teams have solid, well-rated defenses. Louisville's number 24 against the rush, number 18 overall against number 15 overall, number 2 against the rush. Um, however, the Orange are 113th against the pass. A lot of important visiting prospects for the Orange this year. The Miller brothers and Lionel Tyler at corner. Jay Custis, Hoff Richter, and Lofton are top players for the home team, the Orange. Juwan Pass, Wilson, who is out, and Williams, the top players at, for the Cardinals. Glad to have you with us it's a here. calm day here inside the Carrier Dome. EA Sports NCAA Football 14 pregame show presented by Nissan. Innovation that excites. Sometimes one of the hardest things to do in college football is... Syracuse and Louisville at the top of the ACC Atlantic, 6-0 and and 5-1. and Louisville, a harsh unranked at 5-1 and after six games, especially compared to a 3-2, and two, eight, number 18, Clemson. One of the most storied legacies in the history of college football. I started my coaching career, I had a dream. And every decision that I made, that I will be the head football coach at Syracuse University. Undefeated, untied. 1959 National Champions. Syracuse has scored an undefeated season, and the team carries Ben Schwartzwalder off the field. It's going to be the greatest victory that you kids have ever had. Dozens of the most prolific and impactful players in the game. The first African American to win the Heisman Trophy. Six members of the Pro Football Hall of Fame. 53 All-America selections. We need to make this place the hardest place to play in the country. We need you. We need everyone. This is our state, our town, our team, and we got to win. Now, go Orange! Spanning more than 10 successful seasons and covering the country from California, Ohio, North Carolina, and Virginia, this is League One NCAA football. Don't you let anyone steal history away from you. Since 1889, this is Syracuse football. You're going to move the football down the field. The Cardinals win the toss and elect to defer. They kick to the three-yard line, and the ball gets returned to the 17, where Syracuse will start the game. Three down lineman. Looks like a 3-3-5 across for the defense. Tainu Vasa scrambles out. He sees green space, reverses back up the seam. That's a fantastic run for seven yards on the first play of the game. It's now second and three. Two down linemen, it looks like this time, as Mo Neal takes the handoff and zero yards as the blitzer times the snap. You won't break or bend this linebacker. He won't miss that tackle too often. Third down, and they're going to need about three yards to pick up the first down. Wide. 
And Lofton coming across from right to left on the drag. Gets five yards and a first down, moving the ball to the 29. Passed right behind a couple of blitzing guys, including the free safety coming down for the blitz. Four, three, under looks like. Lofton comes in motion. Tanuvasa keeps it. Solid run blocking gets him past the first down marker and more. It's a 17-yard gain. They're now five yards shy of midfield. Shotgun split big here. Two tight ends, two halfbacks. It's quarterback keeper. He runs outside left. Ten yards, pushed out of bounds after 14. The Orange are now in Cardinal territory. Mo Neal cantilevers off a couple of his own guys, but gets seven yards on a first down run. Second and three on the 34. Tanuvasa, eight yards, and tackled, scrambling out into space on the right. From the 26-yard line, first down. 3-3 three, three split. Tanuvasa keeps it on a read option, moves six yards into the middle of the field. Second and four, now in the red zone. And off to Neal this time, gets seven. Showing that fantastic running game we talked about before the game. It's now first and 10 from the 12 for the Orange. Three, three, five. Looks like a stack here from the defense. Tanuvasa doesn't like his passes, scrambles out. Dodges a defender, gets a two-yard gain, tackled from behind. Second and eight now from the ten. This is a nine formation now for Tanuvasa and the Orange. They fake the handoff. Tanuvaso scrambles a little bit and takes the check down to Tyrell Richards for two yards. Third and six now from the eight. Red zone defense stiffening here for the Cardinals. As we are halfway through so we're looking at another third down here. the first quarter. Shotgun normal against a 3-3-5 stack. Tanuvasa scrambles out, running all the way to the left side and muscles through a pair of defenders. It's first and goal now from the two. Everything on the ground is working. A lot of good coverage so far for the Cardinals means Tommy Tanuvasa is looking... As now we see five wide receivers against four down linemen, likely a dime. Tanuvaso waiting. And the drag route there was open if the guy, if the uh, receiver, I'm sorry, wasn't uh, stumbled. And got pat it got past the guy, but uh, tripped up. And had his head down. 
It's now second and goal from the two. This is what uh, in the business is called a beast mode territory. As we see another five wide receivers and another dime. Tanuvasa scrambling. And he takes a sack and loses two yards. And he is out. So here we go. It's third and goal from the four, and this would break the tie. Spread flex on the four. Handoff to Neal. Tackled right after he crosses the plane. That's the first point of the game at 2.51. Four yards, 79 of them on the ground. And it takes uh, five minutes, nine seconds off the clock to begin this game. Tommy Tanuvasa with some bruised ribs. He will return soon, hopefully. The orange defense can slow down, take as much time as they as they like here. Although we're taking a quick look at the depth chart. as we see four wide receivers and a single back coming in for the Cardinals. This is a spread flex. And the quarterback runs into a couple of defenders trying to escape and Juwan Pass gets sacked by the third man. This time played by Henderson Jr., not Orson Welles. A great start by the defense, as once again Juwan Pass is forced out and sacked again. Back to back, make it third and two miles. Bad boys, bad boys, what you gonna do? What you gonna do when they come for you? Bad boys, bad boys, what you gonna do? What you gonna do when they come for you? And now on third and 20, the third offensive play of the game here for Louisville. Um, they come out in 11 personnel, looks like a pistol. And Juwan Pass goes up to the left slot and it is deflected by double coverage. It's a three and out here for the Orange. They are taking care of business. And the only question is, is, is Tan Tommy Tanuvasa going to be back in the game by the time this offense snaps the ball again? Quality coverage, including a pancake, let Michael Schumacher get a 14-yard return to the Cardinals' 43-yard line. It looks like Tanuvasa is indeed back in the game as the Orange now take possession of the ball for the second time in fantastic field position. 
to shotgun wide trips here. They go to Lofton, the slot receiver. He gets 11 yards, about six of it after the catch, coming right to left on the drag route. Tanuvasa with another big run. This one for 21 yards out of the scramble from the five wide. Gaps in the zones and went through it. Split offset here. They key on the halfback, but a couple of guys stunting around. Slow Tanuvasa down enough to stop him for four. Second and six from the six. Wide trips against a 3 3 5 stack here. Tanuvasa waiting, not finding anything, and throws the ball away. It's now third and six from the six. It seems like we were only here two minutes and nine seconds ago. Third and six. Six yards to the end zone. Spread flex looks like a dollar three two six here. And Neal out of the backfield. Six yards and they call him short. It is fourth and inches. Now with twenty three seconds on the game clock, twenty four seconds on the play clock, they could pull a basketball move here. But if they do go for it, if they do snap the ball, that's one of their 12 for the season as you get a limited amount in League One. And Tanuvasa lets the clock hit zero. We're going to begin the second quarter. Fourth in inches. From the goal line. And the Orange send a different offense out onto the field and just before the delay of game, snap the ball to Mo Neal in for the fullback. Mo Neal taking the fullback dive inches in for the touchdown. And that's a two score game. Williams takes a knee deep as Hoffrichter gets it almost out the back. And they're going to start on their own 25-yard line.
pretty one-sided first quarter, but I wouldn't be surprised if things change in a big way before halftime. Looks like shotgun spread trips, and Juwan Pass is sacked for the third time. Different defensive look here from the orange, and Juwan Pass scrambles out. He takes the first hit, he takes the second hit, and run blocking lets him pass the first down marker. There's a 24-yard scramble for Juwan Pass. That time they had tight coverage, which left no options other than for the quarterback to take off. First and ten, ball on the 41. Still shotgun spread here. Juwan pass in the pocket. Reed on the curl, takes the first hit and shrugs it. Gets a 28-yard reception, Corey Reed in the right slot. First completion of the game for the Cardinals. Shotgun spread. Green, a second short. Keon Wakefield, the check down for three yards on first down right over the middle. The middle linebacker almost with a hand in. It's now second and seven on the 28. It's second down, seven to go. Ball on the 28. Still in the spread, single back. Green forces Juwan Pass out of the pocket. And Henderson Jr. completes the tackle. It's a four-yard gain, third and a four now on the 24-yard line. Juwan Pass flush from the pocket again. Henderson Jr. again, this time stopping for him for a zero-yard gain. It's fourth and three from the 24, and the kicker is taking the field. The defense stays on the field in case of any funny business on this medium-length field goal. It's up. Ooh, and it's just inside the left upright. And now, Syracuse will return the kickoff. Kick to the three. Allworth catches it. And gets to the 17-yard line. Third possession of the game for the Syracuse Orange. Flexbone offense here, four, three under. Metcalf comes in motion. Tanuvasa keeps it. Gets a seven-yard gain. On the inside, quarterback keeper. And they come back out on second and three in a split big, two tight ends, two halfbacks. Tanuvasa keeps it, is going upfield. He's got one man to beat as he's crossing the field, and he is gone. That is a 76-yard touchdown run by Tommy Tanuvasa. became the 
the mighty Battle Cat, and I became He-Man, the most powerful man in the universe. Only three others share this secret. The kicker looks like he's ready to kick this one off. He kicks it off, and he got all of that one. Williams takes it in the end zone, right in the middle of the letters. And Louisville will begin on their own 25-yard line. Coming back out in four wide receivers and a single back. Spread formation right in the middle of the field. Handoff is to Williams. And he's taken down, and that's a two-yard loss on the first running attempt of the game for D. Williams, almost halfway through the second quarter. Day Williams, an impact player. Surprisingly few running attempts so far this game. As there have been so many sacks, it is long distance all day. It's now 13 and 9. Sorry, th third and 19. Strike that, reverse it. And. Uh, Juwan Pass having to put the ball in the air. And Keon Wakefield running a corner route gets just enough before going out of bounds to get first and ten. Keon Wakefield again, this time five yards as the defenders draped all over him. Troy Henderson Jr. with his sixth tackle of the game. And once again, Green bringing pressure to Juwan Pass. And he, he, he wants to, but he just hasn't been able to that much this game. As he keeps getting sacked. Back-to-back -back sacks there makes it 4th and 20. And we'll see another punt here from the Cardinals. Up by 17. Schumacher gets a 12-yard return. They're two yards short of enemy territory. There are 3.01 remaining in the first half. Tanuvasa, five wide receivers, scrambles out, gets 11 yards, and is taken down by one of the coverage defenders. And they hurry up to the right hash. Tanuvasa again doesn't like it, scrambles out, sails it deep. Lofton gets under it and makes a radical change of direction and dives for the pylon. A huge play. One-handed catch and then muscles his way to the pylon with two defenders on him. 
fantastic play there by Lofton. A 16-second touchdown drive there from the Orange. As it is now 28-3. to Let's see if the Louisville Cardinals uh, can do any better than the Atlanta Falcons. Oh, I'm sorry. Strike that reverse. to punt the ball away the last time they had it they'll be looking for a little more out of their offense on this possession this offense needs to start playing some emotional football here comes the pressure slings it it takes four men to take down day williams it's a 15 yard catch to the halfback But that moves the chains and starts the clock for the Cardinals. From their own 40 yard line, first down. Wakefield on the sideline, 21 yards. As they came in the crosses, or the, the switch, whatever the heck that you, can, you want to call that out there. In enemy territory for the second time here, so staying with the spread set, are the Cardinals. Back-to-back -back catches to Keon Wakefield, this time a corner route for 18 yards and falling out of bounds. Right into a gap in the defense. Out of the pocket, sheds one tack and slides for a four-yard gain. They use a timeout at 156. Second and six on the 18. And the spread flex coming out of the huddle with a little bit of pepper in their step. And Fitzpatrick, the far left receiver, comes on a right to left slant, and they call that a touchdown as he leans over. That, that looks sus suspect there on the touchdown. And it looks like, yes, we're going to get a coach's challenge on the touchdown. Yeah. I mean, he he should be yeah he should be down, but who knows if they're saying somebody was underneath him? We'll see. And they leave it. It cost Syracuse a timeout. That was a a pretty egregious use of of VAR there as we've been seeing all week in the World Cup. And with that, Louisville is now down 18 points. There is 151 remaining in the first half. They kick it to the right, to the four. Schumacher gets it. Gets to the 25-yard line. 
Syracuse with three times as many yards on the ground as they have through the air this game. And they come out in the eye to begin the two-minute drill. Tanuvasa escapes some pursuit. And Mark Bavaro, the tight end, gets 18 yards and out of bounds from a throw on the run by Tommy Tanuvasa. Out in the eye again against a 4-3 stack. Another fake handoff. Bavaro again, this time wide open from the get-go. 18 yards and tackled inbounds. And it's a hurry-up offense. Oh, no, I'm sorry. No, it does look like they went to the huddle. And again, Bavaro cuts back. Cuts outside, I should say, and opens himself up for another long gain. At 1.27, the clock is stopped when he goes out of bounds just outside the red zone. 24-yard line, first and 10. Syracuse is a minute and 27 seconds and two timeouts. On the right hash, once again, in the eye. And this time, Russ Yeast, the defender, the safety, comes down and gets a hand in to deflect it away from Bavaro, who had otherwise broken his coverage wide open. It's now second and 10 from the 24-yard line. Clock stopped at 24, 124 by the incompletion. Tanuvasa pitches to Lofton, who gets 14 yards and out of bounds to get first and goal now from the 10. Come out in the eye against a 3-3-5 stack here. Tanuvasa scrambling out. Waiting for Bavaro to break coverage deep in the far back corner. And Mark Bavaro with a touchdown. They're just showing off as that, my friends, is an NFL catch. And it's back to a 25-point game. Louisville now with 112 to go after the kickoff. Hoffrichter puts his leg into it. Williams going to take the knee. It's 112, two timeouts for Louisville to see what they can do to finish out the first half.
things are on the verge of getting out of hand before we even hit the half. These next few drives are going to go a long way in determining what kind of game this will end up being. Coverage defense here against the deep ball. Averett, the tight end, slips the closing defender. And they go to the huddle here. Just inside enemy territory. Spread trips from the right hash. It's a screen. Day Williams, the halfback on the screen, loses five yards as the defense reads the screen perfectly. It costs Louisville a timeout. Second and 15 now. Green under pressure. And he goes for the scramble. It's a two-yard gain. Syracuse spends a timeout on third and 13. And we'll see what they can come up with. And the corner route, they're calling, ooh, out of bounds. That's a big save for the Syracuse Orange. It's now a punt on fourth and 13. Schumacher gets out from under it, lets it bounce into the end zone. Wow, Louisville minus 10 yards in the first quarter. You don't see that very often. 35 seconds remain, one timeout. Syracuse on their own 20 yard line. I love to watch a quarterback when he can really get into sync with his wide receivers. These guys have worked all week on their preparation to attack this defense. Bavaro with another NFL catch for 15 yards out of bounds, stopping the clock. That's four seconds off the clock. It moves them to the 35-yard line. Much easier to find for a quarterback and a receiver to pick up big yards like we just saw there. From their own 35-yard line. First down. Syracuse up by a bunch. Lofton playing tight end this time on a corner route. Another five seconds off the clock, another 20 yards. As he turns up field for an extra few. They're now in enemy territory after starting on their own 20. Bavaro, 12 yards stopping this time and then stepping out of bounds. 21 seconds on their own on the 30. Still one timeout for the Orange. Fourteen yards for Lofton, three seconds. They're now in the red zone with 18 seconds remaining in the first half. They've got one timeout. They're on the 16-yard line. First and 10. Ball on the 16. 
Another 12-yarder to Bavaro. Spends four seconds. It's first and goal now from the four. He's got over 100 yards and a touchdown this game. Syracuse out in the flex bone. Four down linemen, three linebackers under. Tommy Tanuvasa steps back and passes to Mo Neal coming from right to left on the drag. And that's a touchdown. And that makes it three scoring tosses for in 31 seconds. Off Richter to Williams again. Williams with the knee. And 11 seconds in one timeout. We'll see if Louisville wants to do anything. And that's a three-yard loss as the Orange knew exactly what the Cardinals were going to attempt to do. And they return to the huddle, and it looks like the, uh, the Cardinals are not going to elect to uh, make a play. And they'll take the ball into the halftime because Louisville will uh, start, the start the second half with the ball down by 32 points. Hi, everybody. Glad to have you with us on the EA Sports NCAA Football 14 Halftime Show presented by Nissan. Innovation that excites. Steve Davis, Dave Pollock here in the studio as always to lend a little perspective to what just went down in the first 30 minutes. Syracuse's first half can be summed up in one word domination yeah Reese one of these things is not like the other I mean I tell you what no. they, they absolutely dominated the ball game it was it was over from the start it seems like you can tell they're gonna score in every possession they're gonna absolutely lock down the other team domination would be an appropriate word David and I will be keeping an eye on your game and everything else going on in the country here in our palatial and comfortable surroundings in the studio the best seat in the house belongs to Brad Nessler and Kirk Herb Street. A quick look at your halftime stats here. The score is 10 for the Cardinals and 42 for the Orange. Cardinals have seven first downs to the Orange's 18. Louisville has 141 yards to Syracuse's 418. Louisville has uh, 13 rushing attempts for minus 10 yards, whereas uh, the Orange are 19 for 211 and three touchdowns. Uh, Louisville are 10 for 12 through the air and, and one touchdown uh, for 151 yards. And the, uh, and the Orange are 15 for 18 to three touchdowns in 207. Third down conversions, a big difference here. As you can see, the Orange are 3 for 4, 75%, whereas the Cardinals are 1 for 5, that's 20%. The Orange spent one fourth down, it was fourth and inches from the goal line. That contributes to their red zone percentage of 4 for 4 for touchdowns, whereas Louisville is also at 100%, but they've only been there once. No turnovers yet. 
uh, good returns so far of 26 and 47 uh, totals for the orange. Time of possession in the orange's favor, but only by just about three minutes. Individual stats here. Tommy Tainuvasta is 15 for 18 for 207, three touchdowns, 83%. An average of 13.8 and a long of 42. That's a 234.9 average. Whereas Juwan Pass is 10 for 12 for 151 and one touchdown. Also 83%. Average of 15.1, a long of 28. He's 216.5. He's been sacked six times to the uh, once of Tommy Tanuvasa. Rushing, so five of those uh, rushes are real rushes, whereas six of them are sacks for Jawan Pass. It's a reason he's in the negative. So considering the fact that he is negative on six of those 11, the fact that he only has a minus 0.4 yard average and minus five total with a long of 24 shows you uh, how much he has gotten on his own. Day Williams, on the other hand, two, and ha has been stopped both times for losses. Rushing on the other side of the ball for Syracuse, one sack for Tommy Tanuvasa and 12 productive scrambles and, or options, including one touchdown with a long of 76, an average of 13.6, and a total of 178 yards, Mo Neal has two touchdowns and 19 yards on five touches, and Lofton 14 yards as a pitch man. Through the air, Bavaro, the uh, golden boy of the two minute drill, with 101 yards in the last two and a half minutes of the second quarter. Lofton, five for 94 with a long of 42, Mo Neal, 2 for 5, and Tyrell Richards, a check down for 2 yards. Louisville Wakefield leads the receiving by far. He's got 5 receptions for 67 yards. The rest of the team only has 5 receptions, although that does bring about uh, 60, 80, 90 yards between them. Defensively, Lynn Strange, the song safety, leads the way in tackles, and Etheridge, the middle linebacker, has the only sack for Louisville. Henderson Jr. has seven sacks, oh, sorry, seven tackles, two of them for loss, one of them is a sack, and Green also seven tackles, six for loss, four sacks. They lead the way for the defense of the Orange. And we'll resume in just a moment.
All right. And Hoff Richter prepares to kick the ball off to Louisville to begin the third quarter. Des Fitzpatrick, the left wide receiver, 10 yards and a first down. Spread trips right, halfback on the left. The quarterback is rushed and he throws it out of bounds. It's second and 10. And the pistol here, tight end on the right side of the line. Juwan pass going deep. And Fitzpatrick had space. That's a 65-yard touchdown. And that was a quick possession there for the Cardinals, but they give the ball back to Schumacher, who is on the wrong side. We'll see. He passed the kicker. He's passed everybody. 97 yards. It looks like that's going to stand. And Syracuse said, you think that was a fast touchdown? Watch this. Hold my beer. <laughs> No plays. A huge return for Schumacher, who's been doing a good job so far. Once again, uh, the Cardinals are on their own 25-yard line. They're going to come out with four wide receivers. This offense just torched the defense through the air with a great passing attack on their last drive. Well, it's one thing to have speed. It's Shotgun spread. Halfback was on the left, and the linebacker came from his right. That's a sack of eight yards. Fifth of the game for Green. Second and 18 now, and we see the pistol here. And Green gets hit by the pass protecting halfback and goes through him brings him along with into the quarterback shins it's third and 24 Williams in the check down as the quarterback had to get rid of it 
quickly as linebacker was closing again. Fourth and 22, they're going to punt from their own end zone. Schumacher on the midfield number, letter, I should say, and returns it 15 yards to the 30-something. On the 37 after that three and out. Tommy Tandavas on the quarterback keeper tries to go outside and the safety is there to bottle him up for two. But excellent field position now here on their third on the opponent's 35 yard line. Tanuasa scrambles out and Bavaro on an out route again, this time 24 yards. Eight catches, 125 yards, and a touchdown for Bavaro. And that really didn't begin until three minutes remained in the third sorry, in the second quarter. And he is now the leading receiver. Now, to be fair, before that started, the Orange had more yards on the ground than they did passing. Tanivasa scrambles and just throws it out as the offensive line gets blowed up. Shotgun normal, halfback weak. 3-3 three, three split, read option, quarterback keeper. Standing up, runs it right up the seam for the touchdown by Tommy Tanavasa. By the power of Grayskull. became the mighty battle cat and I became He-Man, the most powerful man in the universe. Only three others share this secret. This one, Syracuse coaches just got to be happy. I'd love to coach a kid like this. Oh, I think these coaches love to coach a guy like this and another great performance by him individually and for this offense. I hope they show some fight here and try to stay competitive. If you're going to get blown out, you at least want Continuing with spread set here. And the coverage is tight, and Green gets through. That's an NCAA record of 24 sacks in the season. And I believe that's six sacks this game for Kevin Green. And they call that catch good, but it's a four-yard gain, meaning it's still third and long for the Cardinals. And they switch to the pistol on third down. And it's a shoestring sack again as really... The two uh, two defensive linemen there, the left end and the, the D tackle, have been splitting the offensive line like the Red Sea all game. Now, Kevin Green is getting credit for the sacks, but you can't give enough credit to those two defenders who are opening up that gap wide. And with good blocking, Schumacher gets it back into enemy territory. 
And once again, this is going to be the 37-yard line where Syracuse will start. 38, I'm sorry. giving up a touchdown on that last drive. I love to watch a quarterback when he can really get into sync with his wide receivers. These guys have worked all week on their preparation to attack. Tanivasa scrambling, sliding. It's a four-yard gain as he slides. And as he looks up, there are four defenders standing over him after the slide. Second and six now on the 34. Halfway through the third. It's a 56 to 17 game as the Orange come out in the split big. Tanivasa back to pass. Metcalf comes on an angle route on the right side, gets five yards, and is tackled. It's third and one. On the 20. Sorry, no, the, 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 the yes, the 20, uh, 28 yard line. Fran Tarkington in, in the Maryland eye. Hands off to Mo Neal. Slips around the weak side and gets eight yards on the weak side ISO run. It's now first and 10 from the 20. The orange again. Well, technically, I suppose that ball really isn't in the red zone. It's just about an inch shy. Shotgun normal, halfback weak, four down lineman, Tanuvasa in the pocket. Neal makes his cut, catches the ball, and is tackled immediately and drops the ball as this defender stands him up. Second and 10 now from the 20. Five wide receivers now in the shotgun. Tanuvasa waits, scrambles out. Runs to the right, has space, steps out of bounds after 11 yards, and that was a gratuitous hit on Tanuvasa. First and goal now from the nine. The defender hits him as he goes out of bounds in the legs. I, I, I would call a personal foul on that, but you know the game how the game likes to let you get hit out of bounds. First and goal now, Tanuvasa in the eye tight. Tight ends bracketing either side. He scrambles. He gets a six-yard gain with a little bit of run blocking thanks to the left side tight end there. Second and goal now from the four. Split offset, four down linemen, linebackers under. Tanuvasa doesn't like the passes, scrambles right, gets to the sideline, and has space to run it in for the touchdown. And it's now 63-17, Orange. And it goes out the back of the end zone, thanks to a little bit of a tailwind here inside the Carrier Dome. The defenders, still a little surprised. Um... A little, little, you know, still, still drinking their water. Don't have their helmets quite yet. Have to rush out to the field uh, after the quick, the quick score thanks to great field position. Oh, and Evan Foster, it goes right into his hands and it bounces. And the line drive bounces off his hands. Oh, that was a great jump by Foster there on the quick pass. It's just, you know. It's hard to catch a 95 mile an hour fastball uh, with the hands outstretched like that. Got 
hit and still completed it. And he's immediately tackled. And there's a face mask on the defense. And that gives uh, 15 yards, 15 yards Louisville needed. First and 10 now on their own 44. First down. Fitzpatrick in space sheds a tackle. And that's a touchdown saving tackle on the 55 yard reception by Des P Fitzpatrick. First and goal from the two. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, first and goal now from the one. Both teams putting out the goal line offense. Or sorry, goal line sets, I should say. And it is handed to Williams, and he walks the ball in. But you know what? That play, that one extra play, gave the orange defense just a little bit more time to rest. Sorry, I should say the orange offense a little bit more time to rest after the, the you know, quick possessions of this game. Nobody's getting quite the full pit stop they expect. Schumacher underneath it at the four. He's got solid blocking. He gets past the 30, plus the 40. And he's pushed out of bounds right just shy of midfield. I think he's going to start at the 48. Yep, 48. And again, excellent field position for this orange offense. With 126 to go in the third. Shotgun ace. Mo Neal underneath on an angle gets seven yards, makes it second and three, and once again, enemy territory. Often comes in motion. Tanuvasa keeps it, runs right up through the B gap between the guard and the tackle. And rather than go outside, runs right through for the first down and more before coming out of the huddle now in five wide against a dollar three two six. Often on the drag route underneath. Catches it four, falls at six between two defenders. I normal on the left hash. Uh, it's a four three over. And a handoff to Neal attempts to go outside. It's a zero yard gain. With a live clock and 13 seconds. That's probably the last play of the quarter. Once again in the eye, normal on third and three. Scrambles, goes to green space, gets a six yard gain, and a first down. First and 10 now on the 20. Mo 
O'Neill takes the handoff and gets two yards. Tanivasa scrambles out and slides down after a three-yard gain, but also breaks the school rushing record. Four yards in a season at 13 and change in game seven of Syracuse's season. The quarterback with almost 1,400 yards rushing. Shotgun Y trips against the 335 stack here. Tanivasa throws that out to Lofton, who had to come back for it, but had space on the defender on the short out in order to get back to the ball and back over the first down marker. First and goal now from the seven. Spread flex, four down lineman. Neal on the blocking on the block and go. Gets four yards at second and three. Empty backfield on the three-yard line. Lofton on a drag route right to left. Three yards, but they call it short. It's third and inches. Third and one. Yeah, third and goal from the one. Third and inches. Yep, looks like about a foot. On third and goal, Tanuvasa with the touchdown, extra point, will make it 70. Five twenty-six to go in the game. Louisville are down by forty-six points. Uh, that's tough to do in five and a half minutes, even with three timeouts, as they put four wide receivers back on the field. Both teams are playing out the stretch here. You want to get experience for guys who normally don't get in the games and try to avoid injury. And it's a screen and. <laughs> That, my friends, is a unicorn as the screen gets blown up for the sack. Um, great defensive coverage on the screen means he never threw it to his screen or his check down and takes the sack. That is just rare as hell. Fitzpatrick with 99 speed, cover zero defense, no one's there to stop him after he breaks free of his defender. Seventeen completions, 380 yards, and it was 215 yards six seconds ago. And that is, that is the second two-play drive that, that, uh, that uh, 
Louisville has had, and they are sending the onside kick unit onto the field, down by 39 points. Smith gets his hands on it, takes it to the ground. Jerry Smith, the backup tight end. Just over halfway to go in the last quarter. Syracuse comes out with five wide receivers. Tanu Vasa scrambles as he doesn't like anything, throws it deep, and Lofton gets underneath it in the green, green grass for 31 yards. And with one play, the Syracuse Orange are right back in the red zone. Tanuvasa doesn't like his looks. He runs for the scramble, and he goes from the left hash to the right sideline, nine yards and out of bounds. Second and one now from the six. It's a shotgun split offset here. No tight ends. Tanuvasa passes to Metcalf on the right side angle. It's a four-yard gain. First and goal now from the two and a half. One and a half, I should say. I'm sorry. First and goal, shotgun normal, half-back weak, four-down lineman. They fake the handoff, and Tanuvasa walks the ball in, standing up. Off Richter with his leg through it. Deep into the end zone for Williams. Putting a tight end on the field for the first time in a while for the Cardinals, but they've got him playing wide receiver. And Fitzpatrick on the corner route. Bounces, bounces out of bounds after 16. He's got 251 yards, and pretty much everything that works this game is through Fitzpatrick. And coverage leads to the sack as drawn pass takes a loss of five yards. First contact there slows him down enough for the second and third man to take him down after a one-yard gain on the scramble by Juwan Pass. Less than three minutes in the game. Throws this one out to the right. Stays in bounds. 
And Fitzpatrick right between two defenders with another fantastic catch for about 18 yards. On the 38, first and 10, it's a screen, and it gets blown up by Green chasing across from the wrong side of the defensive line. He catches up with the halfback and blows the screen up for a loss of four. Shotgun spread, halfback left side, Juwan pass, forced in out of the pocket and gets sandwiched. Derek Thomas this time, it's his first sack of the game, he gets credit as uh, Kevin Green really forced him into Derek Thomas. And it's now third and a mile. Keon Wakefield, the number two receiver this game for the Cardinals. Their slot receiver gets a 21-yard game, keeps the drive alive. Under two minutes now to go in the fourth. Down by 46, the handoff is to Williams. And he gets tabled for a loss. Normally, the engine of the offense, Day Williams, four carries minus 1.5. And they go to the screen again, and Green again gets Day Williams from behind. And makes it third and 15. On third and long again. Champ Bailey with his deflection right off of his hands. And on fourth and 15, they're putting it all on the field here with 43 seconds to go. And the story of the game, it's another sack on fourth and 13. It's a turnover on downs. It's first and 10 now from the 37. Surprising move here. 40 seconds to go in the game, and Syracuse puts Hoffrichter on the field in a punt formation. On their own 37, punting from deep. And he gets a lot underneath it. It's going to hit the 25-yard line and bounce to the 9. And I thought for a second that it had 
hit that defender and might have been a live ball. At which point it would have been a touchdown. But now uh, Louisville has the ball again. 33 seconds to go. Des Fitzpatrick, seven receptions for 250-something yards there, it looked like. 271, I'm sorry. 33 seconds to go in the game. And it's a sack for a loss of six. Syracuse calling a timeout. Get their players some rest. It is second and 16 from the two and a half. Read this time, 27 yard line, tackled inbounds as Juwan Pass had time in the pocket. Sixteen seconds, live clock. Now the ball's been spotted. And pass just as the just as the ball gets out. And Wakefield catches the ball and steps out of bounds when the safety comes and pushes him out. Just barely out of bounds. Touchdown saving tackle there by the safety. Nine seconds to go. From the 43 yard line, first down. Syracuse calls a timeout. Averett, tight end in motions. And Green comes through with a sack. And that should be it. Five seconds, second and 16. A fantastic performance. Really the only savior of the game was uh, Fitzpatrick. That's what kept Louisville getting points. They were never really in the game after Syracuse got out to a uh, three-score lead in the first quarter. Second quarter. Second quarter, I'm sorry. But a fantastic game by the defense of the Orange. Yeah. A fantastic, I mean, they, except for the punt, they scored on every drive, and they punted on first down probably because they wanted a good punt in the kicker's resume. So a fantastic and, you know, as the commentator said at the half, dominant game for the Syracuse Orange. Really, the only thing that could have changed it is if um, Louisville had gone to Fitzpatrick from the get-go, they didn't really go to him until the second half. He only had one catch of the half, so that was a big difference. And uh, just a fantastic overall performance by Tommy Tanduvasa, Green, and Henderson Jr., and Bavaro uh, for the standouts, really, for the Orange this game. Thanks for joining us. This has been the first game of our doubleheader. I have been Coach Ninja, the voice of Syracuse football, giving you the play-by-play -play as Coach Spector, the head coach of the Syracuse Orange, have been uh, dominating the Louisville Cardinals. Quick look at some stats here. The uh, Cardinals end the game with minus 74 yards on the ground. Um, 
but 483 yards through the air, which is a lot. 24 runs, 34, uh, 34 runs, 24, 29 passes, pretty balanced, but 292 yards on the ground is incredible. Seven out of eight on third down is amazing. Yeah, no turnovers, despite a couple of real close deflections. Tommy Tanuvasa, 24 for 29, 299 yards and three touchdowns, and another 225 for 249 on the ground. Lofton jumped past Bavaro, who was leading by far at the half. Green with... 17 tackles for loss, 12 sacks. An incredible game for Kevin Green. As we mentioned, the D tackles on the right side of that line there just absolutely dominating and giving him all the space in the world to just get into that backfield and play havoc all game. That is an incredible game by Kevin Green. Juwan Pass had a good game once he figured out to go to Fitzpatrick um, and got got chances, but, you know, 22 attempts for minus 68, mainly because uh, most of those were, 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 were sacks. Fitzpatrick, 271 yards, an average of 38.7. And Strange there with nine tackles leading the way. Thank you for joining us on the first of our double header. We will resume shortly with uh, the number 25 SMU Mustangs at Navy.
Hello, sports fans. Welcome to game number two of the Independence Day doubleheader. We hope you're enjoying your 4th of July, your day off from work or school. We've got an exciting matchup, a rivalry game, an important game in the context of the American West Division. Number 25, SMU at Navy Marine Corps Memorial Stadium, Indianapolis, Maryland where SMU will take on the Navy Midshipmen. Coach Ninja, the head coach of the Navy Midshipmen, will give you a rundown of what to expect out of the SMU lineup shortly. Thank you, Coach. Uh, first up, Austin Upshaw here, impact player at quarterback. He has awareness. He has speed. He has agility. He is very good, and he will run the ball well. Uh, Casey Medlock is also speed and agility. Um, and as you can see here, he's got 40 yards a game on the ground, but he's got 53 yards... Oh, sorry. F yeah, 53 yards a game through the air. So that's about 13 more yards per game through the air than on the ground, even to the halfback. Fullback, not really used to speak of. And the motor of their offense is Alex Honey, who gets 104 yards a game, has seven touchdowns six games into the season. Benson is an impact player with 65. Page is 52. Bell not really used so they go three deep and they do use a tight end and they get 36 yards and four touch and four touchdowns to Josh Jackson the tight end their line is very good 85 82 92 91 83 is out but he's replaced by an 82 who's very good defensively 85 80 on the right end, a 90 D tackle. If they move to more than one D tackle, they're vulnerable, but they rarely do. Left outside, middle, right linebackers, all good. This is a quality defense all around. This injured corner, Mike Jenkins, will play. 90 free safety, 84 strong safety. This is a solid team across the board. Very scared, and they got they have a very high-powered offense, so we're going to do what we can to hold on to the ball, slow them down, and come out of this game with a win. All right, thanks for joining us. We will uh, be kicking off shortly. You see the challenge here for the Navy Midshipmen, the number two passing attack. Facing off against the 118th ranked pass defense. That will be the challenge for Navy. As Coach Ninja said, the midshipmen will try to keep that offense off the field. They've done an awful lot of scouting leading into this game. And hope to be well aware of what the tendencies for the Mustangs are. 25th ranked SMU Mustangs were a top 15 team last season and in fact won the American Conference over USF another top 15 team last season who's fallen on harder times this year than SMU has SMU as you see ranked 25th still winning football games USF running into a little bit of trouble they're still a winning football team but not ranked this year this is a rivalry game. You see here the stats, the statistics, the rankings for both teams. That SMU offense, sixth in scoring, ninth in yards, second in the nation in passing, 107th rushing, but that's because they pass, pass, pass. Defensively, they are better against the run than they are against the pass, although this commentator suspects that's because a lot of teams are trying to play catch-up. Navy, for their part, third in the nation against the run. That probably won't come into play too much this game outside of quarterback scrambles. The challenge will be for Navy to prevent SMU from very many possessions. Several visits for the midshipmen of import 
Moss and Alvarez leading the way. The star players for the midshipmen, Perry, Rawls, and Lee, you see their stats there at the bottom of the screen. And SMU coming in with Upshaw, the super quick, good passing quarterback, along with Howerton, a great center, and Spears, a great middle linebacker. Injuries having already been covered by Coach Ninja. And we are imminently about to kick off. We're here live in Annapolis, Maryland for this football contest between the Mustangs and the Midshipmen. Happy Independence Day. You see the battles of the United States Navy and Marine Corps ringed around the stadium, an appropriate setting for this day's action. Last minute adjustments being made by Coach Ninja. And we are underway. Manson takes the kick, gets out to just shy of the 20. Going to be about the 18 where Navy will take over possession on their opening drive. First and 10 from about the 19. Navy coming out in a spread set. SMU responding with three down linemen. Finds Richards for a three yard catch. It's going to be second and seven for the midshipmen. Maybe coming out in the eye tight against three down linemen. Handoff up the gut to Perry. He picks up a couple. Going to be third and five when we resume play. Because right now he's leading the conference statistically. Thank you, Coach Jocular. Appreciate the support. Wishing you nothing but the best here from the nation's capital. Multiple receivers. Quick pass over the middle to McKinley. Picks up the first down. It's a 12-yard gain. Gets more than enough on third and five. Going to be a fresh set of downs for the midshipmen on the 35 in this rivalry game. Shotgun wide trips facing off against the three down linemen set for the Mustangs. Out of the backfield, Perry picks up the reception. It's good for three yards. Going to be second and seven. Navy goes no huddle. They want to keep that personnel package on the field for the Mustangs. 
They'll attack it here with a single back set. Taking their time. Every second off the clock is a second that SMU doesn't have the football. Quarterback keeper is a loss of three for Reggie Hayes. Now going to be third and long for the midshipman. Five wide receivers set. It's a dollar three two six for SMU. Back to pass goes Hayes. Looking, finds Richards over the middle. Good gain for 21 yards. More than enough for the first down. Gets the midshipman across the, in the midfield stripe. High tight formation. Twin tight end set for the middies against the 3 3 5 across. Up the gut goes Perry. Good yardage. Picks up six on first down. Now going to be second and four for the midshipman. Play of the series. 3-3-5 defense for SMU. Navy responding with a shotgun wide trips. Read option. Hayes picks up the first down. Falls across the marker. Picks up four. Going to be a fresh set of downs in SMU territory. As we approach the halfway mark of the first quarter on Navy's opening possession. It's the ninth play of the drive. Twin tight end set. I tight for the middies. 3-3-5 offset defense for SMU. One of the linebackers near the line of scrimmage, but didn't have his hand to the dirt. Still counts as a 3-3-5 setup for the defense. However, they did have personnel stacked up on the line of scrimmage. About the most aggressive you'll see a 3-3-5 defense against the run in that particular package. Now a true 3-3-5 facing off against a single back three wide receiver set. Perry looking for space up the middle. Can't find running room. Tackled for no gain. Going to be third down. Eight yards to go from SMU's 32-yard line. Spread set for the middies. Complete and then incomplete as he was struck at the moment of reception. Drops the football and Navy's going to, going to attempt a 49-yard field goal. Try to put the first points on the board in favor of the United States Naval Academy. Kick is up and good through the uprights. It's 3-0 midshipmen on the opening drive. They get points. They have the lead here in the early going. They took 5 minutes and 20 seconds off the clock in doing so. And SMU will get the football for the first time today here in the first quarter. Following that long drive, that successful scoring drive by the midshipmen. Kick goes well into the checkerboards. 
And SMU is going to take over at the 25-yard line. This high-powered passing attack now taking the field. Shotgun set for SMU. Back to pass, then looks to scramble. And down he goes. Stiff arms his way to an extra two and a half, three yards after contact. Picks up eight yards on the quarterback scramble. Now going to be second and short as SMU goes to the no huddle as expected. Scrambles again, breaks the tackle, falls forward for the first down. Plenty of bodies nearby in close proximity. But Navy had a tall task in preventing the first down on that play. One half back, four wide receivers break the huddle for the Mustangs. There's an injury on the play to the quarterback, and Bird now takes the reins of the SMU offense, completes his first pass for four yards on a quick out. They run no huddle. It'll continue to be the backup for the time being at quarterback. Out of the pistol set, and Bird finds his man. Judah Bell picks up 16 yards. His second catch, two for two for Martin Bird coming on in relief at quarterback for the Mustangs. Almost sacked, but he gets the ball away. Bell breaks the tackle. He's into the end zone. And the backup quarterback goes three for three, all three to Judah Bell. And just like that, SMU has their first touchdown. Both teams scoring on their opening drives. Navy with a field goal, SMU with a touchdown. And the extra point will make it a 7-3 to three ball game here in the early going. It'll be interesting to see next possession, whether it's Bell at quarterback or the starting quarterback. Bell having already heated up to a certain extent from the backup position. But the Navy coaching staff certainly hoping that he stays in the game. He is still less dangerous than the starter. Manson breaks to the left, but the blocking isn't there. Navy's going to take over on their own 14. That only allows them more opportunity to take off more time off the clock as they look to keep SMU's offense off the field. They come out in the eye tight. 3-3-5 three, three, bear for SMU. Quick pass to Richards. He hangs on in traffic. Picks up four, now going to be second down, six yards to go. Thank you, Coach R. Bark. We'll pass on the well wishes to Coach Ninja. It's second down. Looks like it's going to be a read option. It is. It's a give up the gut to Perry. He picks up four, now going to be third and two. One minute remaining in the first quarter. Three-man front for SMU. Navy coming out in a spread set. Complete over the middle, and he does get the first down. They're going to call it three on third and two. Vince Richards across the first down marker, a fresh set of downs on Navy's 25-yard line. 43 seconds remaining in the first. Flexbone set. 3-3-5 bear. Hayes on the keeper. Stopped for no gain. 
Navy now having the opportunity to call a basketball play, see if they like the look. Otherwise, we could go to the second quarter. From their own 25 yard line. Second down. They do elect to do so. And the second quarter will start with Navy in possession, facing second and ten in their own territory. Seven to three, the score. Nothing better than supporting the United States Naval Academy on the 4th of July. It's a 7-3 ball game here in the early going. We're just now getting started in the second quarter. High tight formation for Navy. They find Henry running left to right across your radio dial. He falls forward for an extra yard and a half, picks up six. Going to be third and four. Back to pass goes Hayes, looking, finds the slant route. McKinley picks up the first down, and a few yards more. It's an 11-yard catch, and Navy continues to march. They're out to their own 41. We're about 30 seconds into the third, sorry, into the second quarter. Navy playing a ball possession game. It's the shotgun split big. And it's the pitch. Bright. Stop for no gain. Now going to be second and ten. We're inside seven minutes. Navy facing second and ten on their own 42-yard line. Seven to three here in the second quarter. Out of the huddle they come in the eye tight. Twin tight end set. Dollar three two six for SMU. Play action pass rolling to the right, hits his man and it's incomplete. Contact was immediate. Forced the ball from his hands. Not going to be third down. Ten yards to go. Well, they'll line it up again on third down. Two for two so far on this drive. They come out in a five wide set. Spread set, five wide receivers for the midshipmen. Scrambles to the left, has space, picks up the first down and more. Avoids contact, gets out of bounds, picks up 17. That's going to boost Hayes to four carries for 18 yards. Now into SMU territory at the Mustang 41-yard line on a drive that started from their own 15-yard line. High tight formation against the 3-3-5 Bear. Up the gut they go to Perry. Falls forward for a yard. Now going to be second and nine. Inside the six minute mark in the second quarter of a one score game. Here's the eleventh play of the draw. Out of the huddle they come. Maybe with a spread set. Three down, linemen for the Mustangs. Hand off up the gut to Perry. Picks up a few yards, four they'll call it. Now going to be third down, five yards to go. The ball resting at SMU's 36-yard line. Navy potentially already in field goal range.
Back to pass goes Hayes. Finds the angle route to Perry. Picks up the first down. Malcolm Perry on the reception. It's good for seven yards. That's his second catch. And it's a fresh set of downs. First and ten on the SMU 30-yard line. We're now inside the five-minute mark. We've got a first and ten. Ball on the 30-yard line. Hayes back to pass. Finds the drag route to McKinley. McKinley picks up four as he falls forward for an extra yard after the catch. Going to be second and six as the midshipmen catch SMU off guard potentially with the no huddle. It's a read option. They bite hard on the halfback. Hayes keeps it. Picks up the first down and a few more on a 10-yard gain. Now going to be first and 10 inside the red zone at the SMU 17-yard line, approaching the midway point of the second quarter. And this is the 15th play of a very solid drive. 3-3-5, Bear for SMU, eye tight for the midshipman. Man in motion, and Hayes finds Richards in the middle of the field, picks up nine yards, going to be every coach's favorite down in distance. Second and one to go. Up the gut to Perry. Picks up the necessary yards for the first down. Going to be first and goal for the midshipman at the Mustang six-yard line. This is the 17th play of this drive. 17th play of a long drive that started inside Navy's 20. They find themselves in the shadow of SMU's goalposts. Lee, Amir Lee on the out route, picks up the touchdown, and that is a score for the midshipmen that puts them ahead in the football game. Navy with a three-point lead at home against the number 25 team in the country, the SMU Mustangs. A rivalry game, a rival for the American West Division. Two drives for Navy, both resulting in scores. One drive for SMU, they found the paint. Here comes their second. Thank you, Coach Blitzkrieg. Appreciate the support. Austin Upshaw back in the football game. That's his first pass attempt. He was out with an injury as SMU scored. The backup, in a no-huddle attack, took the offense down the field. Austin Upshaw, the starting quarterback, coming in fresh and potentially cold. Second and ten for the Mustangs. It's complete. Nearly sacked. A broken tackle is going to result in a first down. It's a 17-yard gain to Judah Bell. Back to the no huddle they go. Austin Upshaw leading the charge. Upshaw drops back, finds the slant route from left to right, and Alex Honey picks up his first catch, the starting number one wide receiver for the Mustangs. Jimmy, 
It's a handoff to the left side, but the Navy defense ready, had personnel there, able to make the tackle and stop Case Medlock for a loss of two. Second and 12, the ball rests at midfield. We are under the three-minute mark of the first half in a one-score football game. SMU coming out with a single halfback and multiple receivers. Upshaw looking. It's almost intercepted, but the result of the play is going to be 10 yards. Now going to be third down, three yards to go as the Mustangs continue with the no huddle. It's a handoff up the gut. He breaks the tackle. Second defender there. SMU's asking for a face mask. They don't get it, but they do get the first down. Pistol set for the Mustangs. Upshaw hands off again up the gut. And Medlock this time stopped for a loss of one. Second 11 as the Mustangs continue with the no huddle. Quick adjustments by the midshipmen on defense as they prepare for the play. The pass to the left side to Bell picks up three. Now going to be third and seven. Back to pass goes Upshaw. Looking. Goes to the left side. Well short of the first down. Tackled two yards shorter than the line of scrimmage. And they may try a field goal. It will be a long and hopeful attempt if they do so. It's fourth down. They call on the 35 yard line is where the ball rests and Navy wants to let the kicker think about it a little bit. SMU is looking to tie things up. The kick is up and splits the uprights. It's a 50-plus yard kick. It didn't clear it by much. Here's the replay. Cleared it by about two or three yards. But it does count for three points, and it does tie the football game with a minute and 26 remaining in the first half. Malcolm Perry with the 26-yard return. He's going to start this Navy drive. They're going to have two timeouts. They're on the right hash. They're on their 26-yard line. They've been like a couple of fighters feeling each other out so far. Let's see if they start to open it up a little bit more now. Eye tight set. Back to pass goes Hayes, finds the tight end, Amir Lee. He caught the touchdown pass. This time he catches a 20-yard pass, and Navy near midfield already. 1.17 on the clock. Takes the check down route, the smart play, picks up eight to Reggie Henry. Now going to be second and two, Navy goes to the no huddle. Reggie Hayes taken down by the defensive end. Eric Rogers with his first sack of the ball game. Now going to be third down, nine yards to go with about a minute remaining in the half. Navy having fought and battled their way to this 10-10 tie. Would like to get some points, but doesn't want to make a mistake. Back to pass goes Hayes. Finds Richards quickly. He was open on the early part of that play. It was a well-timed, quick throw. He picks up 16. It's going to be a first down. And Navy just outside scoring range. 
Once again, a quick pass on the inside slant this time to Henry. Reggie Henry coming up with his third catch of the game. Hayes off to a 16 for 18 start. Navy having been judicious and careful in their passing attack thus far with great success. Now in the red zone, 26 seconds and counting. Play action pass, rolling to the right, and it's it's complete to Amir Lee for a touchdown. That is a 16 to 10 lead by Navy. The extra point will make it a seven point ball game. And a two minute drill of high success puts the midshipmen ahead. With 22 seconds remaining in the half, Navy takes a touchdown lead. Hits the stanchion. SMU takes over on their 25. It's a handoff up the gut. He gets to about the Just shy of the first down. Good for nine as SMU calls the timeout with 17 seconds remaining. Short yardage situation here. It's second down and one. Quarter set, shotgun set. Upshaw scrambles short of the first down as SMU spends their second time out with 11 seconds left. Navy didn't give them a whole lot of time to work with to begin with. And now the Mustangs feeling the crunch of the clock. Short yardage situation here. It's third and one. Shotgun set for the Mustangs. No, it's a pistol set. Man in motion, left to right. Back to pass goes Upshaw. Looking, looking. Now chucks it very deep. A lot of bodies there, but the ball falls incomplete. There were three defenders for Navy versus one receiver. But this sportscaster wasn't quite sure if anybody was going to come down with it. Much less which team. Now fourth and one, and with only three seconds, SMU is actually not going to punt. They're going to come out on offense. Going deep again, and caught, but time expires. And we break for halftime with Navy ahead by seven, 17 to 10. on the EA Sports NCAA Football 14 Halftime Show presented by Nissan. Innovation that excites. He's Davis, Dave Pollock here in the studio as always to lend a little perspective to what just went down in the first 30 minutes. This game's been everything we anticipated it being. Each team matching each other blow for blow. Just a one possession game at this point. What do you expect to change things in the second half? Well, it, it's always it's always fun to watch two teams and two games ma match up the hype. And we, we talk about it all week and how big this game is. And it's going to come down to players making plays. And, you know, the, the big play is something that we continue to beat into the ground. And which one doesn't give that up? A lot of times, you know, games are lost and won by turnovers and, and giving it away and making that crucial mistake. You can do everything right and you can execute right, but it just takes that one misstep, that one turnover to, to really put you in a bad position or a bad situation. They can determine this game. That's what it looks like it's going to. Both teams executing well. Who's going to make a big mistake? Just about time to start the second half. What, what do you think Herbstreit's first point of analysis will be? Uh, 
Uh, I don't know, something to do with quarterback play, I'm sure. I mean, we always got to hear that stuff all the time. It's all about the quarterbacks. Brad and Kirk ready for the second half.
We're about to get underway for the second half, but we're going to take a quick look at some game stats for both teams and players. We see Navy with the extra possession having about 60 yards. It's about one drive. Both teams having moved the football, but Navy used that extra possession for the touchdown with the two-minute drill, the successful two-minute drill right before the half to take the 17-10 lead. Navy out rushing SMU by 19 yards. Both teams, only two incompletions in the passing game. For individual stats, take a quick look. Navy, more importantly, SMU, taking a look at their tendencies. Bird coming in, going three for three on the touchdown drive. Upshaw, six for eight. Marginal rushing. Passing wise, Judah Bell with six catches for 83 yards. Page the deep threat, two for 69. Without further ado, we're going to get the second half underway with Navy ahead, 17 to 10. SMU will receive the kickoff to start the second half. Hits the stanchion once again. That means the Mustangs, the 25th ranked Mustangs, will take over on the 25. Single back set, four wide receivers for the Mustangs. Navy comes out in a 4-3 under. Back to pass goes Upshaw, looking, scrambles to the right. Picks up positive yardage, but not too much. There might be a face mask call. We'll see what it is. It is a face mask call. That's going to give the Mustangs an automatic first down at their own 43-yard line. Already near midfield, thanks to the personal foul 15-yard penalty. Navy holding a one-score lead, 17-10. to 10. We're here in the third quarter of this exciting American Western Division rivalry game. Upshaw has to move around in the pocket. There was good pressure by Navy. They weren't quite able to get there, but they caused some uproar. Upshaw needed everything he had to get positive yardage on that play. Caught by Benson. Brandon Benson picks up 10 yards. That's his first catch of the game for the impact player. To the no huddle they go. Navy stays with the 4-3 under, trying to rush the quarterback. Quick pass to Bell. Judah Bell picks up a six-yard gain on his seventh catch of the game. He's got seven for 89 and a touchdown. We now have second and four in Navy territory at about the 35-yard line. Heavy pass rush forces Austin Upshaw to get rid of the football. It's an incompletion intentionally, so it's going to bring up third and four. Shotgun set against a quarter defense. Back to pass goes Upshaw. Scrambles to his right. Breaks a tackle. Gets the first down. Breaks a second tackle. And a third and a fourth. It is the fifth defender who pushes him out of bounds after an 18-yard gain. SMU now in the red zone. Staying with the no huddle. A minute and 12 into the second half. 
Pistol set, handoff up the gut to Medlock, picks up four. Now going to be second and six, a rare running play from SMU there on first down. Navy stays with the 4-3 under, heavy pressure. Almost sacked, but Austin Upshaw gets rid of the football, and Judah Bell picks up his eighth catch for 98 yards. Upshaw, 10 out of 13 so far. And it's caught for the touchdown by Tyler Page. That's going to tie the football game, awaiting the extra point as SMU scores on the opening drive of the second half. Catch, but the booth signaled down to the referee that they'd like to take another peek at this. Man, as I see this play again, it really looks like he made the correct call on the field. After review of the play, the ruling on the field stands. Well, I think the play warranted a review. The review rules that it was a touchdown, and SMU will now attempt the extra point to tie the football game. For the extra point in an attempt to tie the game. Kick is up and good, and we are tied at 17 here in the third frame. Navy now set to receive the kickoff for their opening possession of the second half. He really got a hold of that kick. Manson takes it two yards deep in the end zone, gets just outside the 20. Tackled at about the 20 and a half yard line where Navy will take over on the left hash. Now's when you start to approach each drive, thinking that if you take the lead. Three man front for SMU, five wide receivers for Navy. The Blue Angels go to the air, and Richards picks up good yardage after the catch at the 22 yard gain. Looks like SMU wasn't expecting that play on that down and distance. From their own 41 yard line. First and 10 from the Navy 41 yard line here at Navy Marine Corps Memorial Stadium in Annapolis, Maryland. On Independence Day, the United States Naval Academy taking on the 25th ranked SMU Mustangs. Taking their time. Read option play, quarterback keeper Reggie Hayes picks up five on first down. Now going to be second and five. Very close to the midfield stripe. It's the shotgun split big for Navy. It's three down linemen for SMU. There's an opening to the left. Hayes takes it. Sp spin move picks up an extra five yards. That's a 15 yard, 15 yard carry. Hayes eluding the first tackler for extra yardage. Now first and 10 from SMU's 38. First down, 10 to go. Ball on the 38-yard line. Shotgun wide trips, three down lineman for SMU. 38-yard line, the marker. Tie ball game here in the third quarter, about halfway through the third quarter. Over the middle to McKinley, he picks up five. Solid gain on first down, now gonna be second and five. The 
the Navy offense content to let seconds melt off the clock. This high-powered number two in the country passing attack for SMU is something that Navy would love nothing more than to keep off the field as much as possible. It is a ball possession strategy by Navy. Handoff up the gut to Perry. Stopped for a loss of two. Now going to be third and seven. Navy still in scoring range right now at the 35. They've got a good leg. They could score from here if they have to, but you got to believe they'd like to convert. They'll spread the field with five wide. Multiple receivers, five wide set for Navy. Reggie Hayes in the shotgun set. Back to pass he goes, and it's complete to the underneath man. An excellent read by Reggie Hayes. He eschewed the deep man who was well covered. Hit the underneath man, McKinley. The second look on that play. Good reading of the defense by Reggie Hayes and the Navy offensive coordinator. Picks up the first down. It's going to be first and 10 on the SMU 23-yard line in a tie football game in the third quarter. I tight set, twin tight ends, 3-3-5 three, three, defense for the Mustangs. Back to pass goes Hayes, finds his man. He was under heavy pressure, almost got tackled in the pocket. But he gets the ball away. It's good for 16 yards. It's going to be first and goal now inside the 10-yard line as the midshipmen reset on offense. First and goal from the eight-yard line. Shotgun split big. 3-3-5 three, three, across. No, 3-3-5 three, three, split for SMU. The read option doesn't work on this play. It's going to be second and goal after a loss of three. the 10-yard line. Second down. 3-3-5. Defense for SMU. Shotgun, single back set for Navy. Back to pass goes Hayes. Finds the angle route to Malcolm Perry. He picks up seven. Now going to be third and goal, but it's inside the five. Good yardage there on the play. Sets up the ball three yards from the end zone. So here we go. It's third and goal from the three yard line. Third and goal. Navy coming out in a spread set. Hayes on fire. Drops back to pass, and it's complete for the touchdown. Todd McKinley picks up his sixth catch of the game, and Navy retakes the lead, 23-17, to awaiting the extra point. We're just 1-12 away from the fourth quarter. Kick is up and through the back of the end zone. 
missing the stanchion this time, but still resulting in a touchback. The Mustangs are going to take over at their 25, trailing by 7 here in the second half. First and 10 for the Mustangs on their 25 as Navy comes out in the 4-3 under. Gets rid of the football. Tackled after a gain of 5 is Judah Bell. That's going to put him over 100 yards on the day as the Mustangs go to the no huddle. Caught over the middle on the slant route. Brandon Benson picks up his second catch. Running right to left across your radio dial. Shotgun set for SMU. No huddle. And Austin Upshaw doesn't like what he sees. Throws the ball out of bounds. And accepts second and ten from their own 39. SMU showing a single halfback and four wide receivers. Let's see how Navy responds. Looks like it's the 4-3 under. They're bringing heat. Eight-yard catch by Judah Bell. Now third and two. Sack on the play. Upshaw under pressure immediately from the right side. He scrambled to his left, but there was just too much pressure. There were too many Navy defenders in the backfield. One of them got a hold of him and brought him down for the sack. And SMU is going to be forced to punt the football back to Navy. It's the first stop for the Navy defense. Man. And he it. Muffed punt by Manson. He does manage to get positive yards after fact. Picks it up and gets forward for about five or six. Navy simply happy to have possession of the football. 29 yard line is where they'll start on what should be the final play of the third quarter. Shotgun split big, 3-3-5 three, three, bear. Run to the left side, Hayes on the keeper, picks up three. Going to be second and seven when we start the final frame. Tight set, second and seven. Up the gut they go. Tackled after a gain of two. Going to be third down, five yards to go. Justin Guy Robertson on the tackle. Three, three, five stack. Defense. Shotgun. Three wide receivers, four wide receivers for the midshipmen. Hayes looking 
completes the pass over the middle in heavy traffic. Todd McKinley coming up with a key catch on third down. That gives Navy a fresh set of downs. Another opportunity to take more time off the clock ahead by a touchdown. Handoff up the gut to Perry. He finds a hole in the B gap on the right side. Picks up probably his best run of the day. Nine and a half yards. Going to be every coach's favorite down in distance. It's second and inches at exactly the midfield stripe. Flex bones set this time for Navy. Three, three, five stack for SMU. Audibles on both sides of the line. And while he is stumbled, Hayes does manage to fall across the first down marker and gives Navy a fresh set of downs ahead by seven. Six and change remaining in the football game. The number two passing attack in the country stymied by ball possession on behalf of the Navy offense. Gets the pitch away. It's a key pitch. It is the difference between a one-yard loss and a massive gain. Hayes able to get the pitch off. That was a challenging situation for Hayes, but he was able to get the pitch off, and it results in first and 10 at the 11 for the midshipman. Could be one of those plays we point to at the conclusion of this game. Back to pass goes Hayes. Finds Perry out of the backfield. He's inside the five yard line. It's a five yard catch. Gonna be second and five. Not quite second and goal. They could conceivably get a first down, but it's essentially second and goal from the five. It's a read option play. It's a give up the gut to Perry. He's tackled for one one yard. Now going to be third down. Three yards to go. Navy inside the five-yard line. Well in scoring distance. Ahead by seven. Four and a half minutes remaining. They need about three yards to get the first down. Here on third down. Navy's going to come out in a spread set on third down. Perfectly content to take time off the clock with the lead in the fourth quarter. Designed quarterback run up the gut. He's tackled short. Going to be fourth and one. And Navy being presented with a decision. The midshipmen attempted to take a two-score lead here in the fourth quarter in the late going of this football game. They send the kicking unit on the field. The kick is up and splits the uprights easily. It is a 10-point midshipman lead. You see a, a big score in the American race 
where Southern Miss upsets Memphis. Memphis has been a top 25 competitor, but this season now three and four as Southern Miss goes to four and two. Number three, New Mexico, with the number one rushing attack in the country, trailing by seven to Utah State, 435 remaining in that game. And now with a 10-point lead, Navy kicks off to SMU. It's going to go out of the back of the end zone once again. Four straight time, the kickoff has been unable to be returned. SMU is going to take over on their 25-yard line, trailing by 10 with 3.20 remaining. Crunch time for both teams. Screen pass, but SMU eschews the pass and throws it out of bounds. Now going to be second and 10 on their 25, trailing by 10. You have to believe this is four down territory for the Mustangs. They'd, they would rather not get there. Navy has done a great job so far on defense and in clock management. The pass is good to the right side. It's a broken tackle, and he is gone well into the end zone very quickly. Exactly what SMU needed as Judah Bell picks up another catch. He's over 150 yards. He's over 10 catches. He is the leading receiver for the Mustangs today as they draw within a field goal awaiting the extra point. 3.06 remaining. Navy is going to get the football back and attempt to melt away the final 187 seconds, 186 seconds. SMU kicks off regular. Navy receives at the goal line. Manson out beyond the 20-yard line to the 23-yard line, maybe the 24. Navy's going to take over with 3.03 remaining, holding a three-point lead and the football. This is a pretty crucial series right here. With things being so tight, your best players have to step it up on both sides of the ball. Navy a couple of first downs away. Navy on first down. Read option, quarterback keeper. Hayes out to the left side. Picks up the first down on a 16-yard run. Doesn't look like SMU is going to call the timeout. They're going to wait to see what happens, but Navy now has an opportunity to take at least 27 seconds off the clock. First and 10, ball on the 39 yard line. 39 yard line, the marker here in this three point game. Handoff up the gut. He makes it to the Tackler is there. It's a three-yard gain. Now going to be second and seven. SMU uses their first timeout with 2.16 remaining. Second and seven, Navy with the football at their own 42-yard line. But a first down, more important than anything else, statistics-wise. Quarterback keeper on the read option, picks up four. 
Going to be third and three. SMU uses their second timeout. And a big, big play coming here. It's third and three, near the midfield stripe. Navy trying to maintain possession and hold on to this three-point lead. Back to pass goes Hayes. It's intercepted by Guy Robinson. He is inside the 30, inside the 20, and into the end zone, and SMU leads. A major play by Justin Guy Robinson gives the Mustangs the lead. However, Navy is going to get the football back with 124 seconds and three timeouts. SMU ahead by four. Two minutes exactly. Navy with three timeouts. Takes the safe underneath route. It was the right call. It gets the first down. That'll momentarily stop the clock. No huddle they go, and sacked on the play. Navy calls their timeout. Oh, that is a big hit on the quarterback. That's one of those as an offensive lineman, when the film study starts to come around, you're going to kind of sink in your chair and just hope they don't call you out because you're going to get embarrassed on Monday. On that one. They come out in a five-wide set. Back to pass goes Hayes, and he's sacked again. It's going to be third and 24. Navy has to use their second timeout. Now with 147, you got to believe it's four down territory. They've got two downs to get 24 yards. Scrambles to the left side. Gets past the defender. Picks up good yardage. Almost gets the first down. It's going to be fourth and inches. Gets the first down. Reggie Hayes is exhausted. But he gets the first down. Navy now with the ball at their own, at their own 44-yard line. One minute, 12 seconds, and counting with one timeout. I tight. Incomplete pass. Forty-four yard line, the marker. Navy with five wide receivers. Hayes goes to his left, nope. going deep, and it's intercepted by Guy Robinson again. That's his second interception in a matter of five plays. It's the second turnover, and it's going to give SMU the football with less than a minute remaining. Navy with only one timeout is not going to be able to prevent SMU from running the clock out. Although SMU now with 
four wide receivers and one halfback are not kneeling the football. Broken tackle, first down, out of bounds, 47 seconds remaining. An SMU in victory formation. Guy Robinson with two interceptions in the final minute and a half of the football game. Navy did everything they could to put themselves in a winning position. But Guy Robinson comes up with two key clutch interceptions for the SMU Mustangs. And that should do it. SMU is going to come away with a four-point victory. It's a heartbreaker for Navy. But the division race is not over with. SMU still vulnerable. They're not as strong as they were last year. They could still lose conference games, certainly to USF or other good teams in the conference. Navy put up a valiant effort against a superior roster, against a superior team. And you better believe that at the beginning of the game, if you had told Navy they were going to lose by four, they wouldn't like it. But they'd like it a little bit better than they do now. The fact is, they were on the precipice of an upset win, and that hurts. But it doesn't detract from the season that Navy's had so far. An improvement upon last year. A couple of extra key wins that they've had over users this particular season in League One has positioned Navy to be ranked by the end of the season if they can run the table. The midshipmen are going to fall to 3-3, three and three, but they're 3-1 and one in the conference. And again, SMU already has a conference loss, yeah, they're two and one. so one extra loss. SMU only needs to lose one more game in the conference, and Navy can still win the division. So while it is a painful loss, it is not a season ender, it is not a completely devastating loss as painful as it may be it is not a loss that will doom Navy this year they are in a good position at three and one in the American Conference we're gonna take a quick look at next week's games and then sign off and wish you well on Independence Day we hope you've enjoyed the broadcast of these two football games Week 9's schedule for both Syracuse and Navy. Taking on greater importance even now. Navy at Tulsa. That's now a must win for the midshipmen. While Syracuse will travel to Tallahassee to take on the Florida State Seminoles who are 4-2. We hope you've enjoyed the broadcast. We hope you enjoy the rest of the weekend. We hope you have a great 4th of July. God bless America. Kick it.